Well, hello, my wonderful music students, back at it again. Uh, May the 4th be with you. Uh, or maybe if you're not getting this until the 5th, then, uh, then you may have to experience the Revenge of the 5th. Whatever. Moving on. We are going to be doing the Revenge of the 5th, at least Chapter 5, for breezing through. So uh, it's a rhythm uh, chapter, so that's what we're going to go into right now. I'm just going to give a quick lesson on this. Uh, some of it's going to be a tiny bit of review just to kind of build everything back up properly. So here we go. So first one, uh, we remember many things about our rhythms, I'm sure. The first one, of course, being quarter notes and the fact that they're one beat long. When you add a bunch of quarter notes together, you end up with certain other lengths of notes. So if you were to, and the plus sign, that's kind of silly. If we were actually to tie those guys together, it'd be a little bit of a different story, but that those all equal the same amount as a whole note that does. Uh, if you go with only two quarter notes and add those guys together, when you add, finish adding those guys together, you end up with the equivalent of what's known as a half note. Now, what if you want something in between? What if you want to have three quarter notes of length instead, or three beats of length instead? Well, in that case, that's when we get to start using dotted rhythms. And that's what chapter five is going to be more mostly about, dotted rhythms. Here we go. So there's your dotted rhythm. And the way that a dot works, the rule for dots is that it always adds half. Dots add half of the previous symbol. Ran out of space. <laughs> Dots add half, that's supposed to be an S. Dots add half of the previous symbol. So if you have a half note, that's two beats worth. If you add a dot on it, that adds one beat onto it because one is half of two. Now I could go crazy with this and I could add yet another dot afterwards. And if I were to do that, now I've added half of the symbol in front of it. So now it's two plus one and a half beats long. And nobody, very few people actually do the double dot system, but it is possible and some people can actually use that. Now, where this becomes useful, and because most of you guys will have already seen dotted half notes before, have you ever seen dotted eighth notes or dotted sixteenth notes even? Well, let's kind of go through this a little bit. If I were to create, if I were to, instead of, deal with, uh, instead of dealing with quarter notes, deal with eighth notes. Okay, and remember, eighth notes can either be flagged or they can be beamed together. It's kind of like taking the two flags and tying them together to create the beam. Then four eighth notes is going to be the same thing as saying one half note. Two eighth notes is going to be the same thing as saying one quarter note. So if I want something in between, I want three eighth notes, then I'm going to end up with a dotted quarter note. And more often than not, what I end up seeing is a dotted quarter note followed, whoops, dotted quarter note followed immediately afterwards by an eighth note just to round out an entire two beats worth. Because if you think about it, three eighth notes plus one eighth note equals two total beats. Okay? Now that's not the only place you'll see the, these. You oftentimes see these as dotted see dotted eighth notes as well. And those situations happen when you're dealing with even smaller notes yet. So for as an example, uh, let's say we're going to go with and 16th notes instead. Now we got double beams or double flags. Well, four 16th notes, that's only one beat's worth. And of course, we remember how to count those. That's going to be a one, E, and, uh, to follow, to add up to one beat's worth. Now, if I want to go with two eighth notes, that's the same thing as, uh, sorry, two 16th notes double flags, single flag, two sixteenth notes is going to add up to the same amount as an, as a ha as an eighth note. Two sixteenths equals one eighth note. What if I want something in between? Well, if I want something in between three eighth or three sixteenth notes worth, I'm going to end up with a dotted eighth note. Three equals one two plus the extra bit there that with to symbolize the dot. Okay. And what that ends up meaning is that more often than not, when I see dotted eight or yeah, dotted eighth notes like so, I'll end up seeing a sixteenth note right after it, or at least paired up with it some way, shape, or form. And so, and we think about it again, 
these are three sixteenth notes, so one E and a, uh, meaning one beat's worth. And they might not go with uh, flags untied. They may oftentimes go with flags tied. So they'll have one flag tied for the eighth notes part worth, get the dot behind the eighth, and then have that other flag on there for the sixteenth note part worth. Uh, I kind of drew my sixteenth note funny there. There, that's a little bit better. The, both of those symbols mean the same thing. And they might not actually be in that order for that matter either. You may actually end up seeing the 16th note go first. Oop, that was too wide. More often than not, that's and when they do that, it's oftentimes a little bit more squeezy together because there's your 16th note and there's your dotted 8th note. And they all equal one beat. One E and a. One E. So that would be as opposed to or something along those lines. Okay. So those are your dotted rhythms and those dotted rhythms, making sure that you can add them up to, to amount to an entire beat for a bar. Those are really important because otherwise you can't line them up and they do go quite quickly. And when you get to these 16th notes points, because if you're dealing with a metronome, that's going to be going, say, then playing 16th notes. One and da ding, ding, da. Okay, those that would be the way that you need to count it. Or one e, two, three, four. One e, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay, so those would be the way that those rhythms would be written out and counted up and added up. So this would be written as a one e, and a, this one here would be a one e and a. Same thing with this one here. One e and a uh, lining up all together, okay, and that's how we can get through the dotted rhythms. The next thing that we see in chapter five is syncopations. So syncopations are the idea that rather than having everything uh, land right on the most important beats, if you think about any any bar, a four four bar usually, there's more important beats than other uh, than others, and uh, or beats that tend to have accents whether we mean to have them or not. And the notes, the beats that tend to have the accents are one and to a lesser extent three. Those ones tend to have the accents. But in syncop syncopated rhythms, we don't allow the notes to land on those every single time. That a syncopated rhythm, in its most basic form, puts the most, it puts the bigger notes, the more uh, emphasized notes, on either two or four, or sometimes both. And so it'll actually end up looking like this. One, two, three, four. That is an extremely basic, straightforward, syncopated rhythm. One, two, goes through three, carries on to four. We can also see those syncopated rhythms oftentimes in eighth notes as well. And a syncopated rhythm that will, for a, and we're gonna go with, we're gonna stick to the four, four bar time Oftentimes you'll see an eighth note. In fact, so many pop tunes use this rhythm, it's ridiculous. And this is actually a little bit of a more drawn out version of a syncopated rhythm. That this is going to be on the one, then it's and, and it carries through beat two into two's and. and so this one will land on beat two's and, so it's going to carry through beat two, land on two's and through beat three because it's worth two eighth notes worth land on its and through beat four and land on its and and even some cases that that syncopation will carry on into the next bar by tying it across the bar line even sometimes too so this would be instead of going all right if this is your pulse one and 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 so on and so forth so it's not on the regular pulses it's on the offbeats or the ands. In much more, uh, qu much quicker syncopations, uh, and I'm just going to go with a 2-4 bar in this case because otherwise I'll be writing forever and boring you guys to tears. In much, uh, in 2-4 situations you can actually use 16th notes to create your syncopated rhythms as well. So if you remember, 1 8th note plus 2 16th notes. 1 8th note plus 2 16th notes. 
Okay, where am I going to put it? Okay, there we go. One eighth note plus two sixteenth notes. That's actually going to equal a total of one full beat. So let's get one eighth note plus two sixteenth notes in here. But we're not going to put them in this as usual order. We're going to put them so that the first one is the sixteenth note, the last one is the sixteenth note. And so that one's going to be counted like one E goes through the and a. Uh, da da da. Okay. Actually, I, should, I can spread that out, make that a little bit easier to see. Here we go. So, let me spread this beauty out. There we go. And we put one sixteenth note at the beginning, one sixteenth note at the end. That's not always the way that we've been doing things. That in many cases, the way we've been doing things has been putting uh, eighth note and then two sixteenths right after it, like this or even two sixteenth notes to begin with and ending with your eighth note. But that's not what we're dealing with this time. We're going to split those eighth note, or those sixteenth notes up apart. And we'll probably do two of them together because we're going for a two four bar. There we go. So we have a sixteenth note here that's going to be on the one this should be on E because it's the next count that comes in afterwards. This one lasts for two sixteenth notes worth, so it's going to carry on through the end. Here's your A. Uh. Now this is a two E and A. Uh. And the nice thing is that they usually group these uh, things into uh, each beat. So this whole thing is one beat long. This whole thing is one beat long. They don't usually beam them across beats. You don't usually see a two in the middle of a set of beams. You usually see the number at the beginning of the beams. So this gives you that full bars rhythm. Sometimes you'll actually see that syncopation like this, at which point be da 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 or one e, uh, two e, uh, and so on and so forth. Sometimes they'll make that syncopation last longer and be a little bit more similar to this guy here and you'll see ties in there to make those syncopations happen, at which point you actually hold through the two instead. So at which point, if this is your tempo, except with the tie, it's going to be... That's a syncopation. And it's, it's usually intended to try to add a little bit of interest to a melodic rhythm or... Uh, even a bass guitar will oftentimes just to change things up a little bit so it's not just dow, 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 boring. The syncopation adds some intrigue to it. So the word again you're going for, syncopazione, syncopation. Okay. The last thing that's in chapter five is triplets. Yay, triplets. Now I'm going to teach you this based on how uh, Breezing Through Theory does this. However, I'm not always a big fan of it. Uh, so triplets, generally speaking, what you're trying to do is put three notes in the space of two. So if you want, if you're trying to put a triplet in, then you can go get away with this. This would be a really good example of a triplet. And it is usually marked with this symbol either above it or underneath. It doesn't really matter. And what they're trying to do is get three notes. Normally we know of two quarter notes equaling one half note. But when they put this symbol in there, what they're trying to say is that that is actually three notes in the space of two. Or three quarter notes in the space of two. You can also do the same thing again and make it three eighth notes in the space of two eighth notes or one quarter note, same thing, okay? Uh, and then you can carry on with sixteenth notes the same way as well, um, but those are usually the ones that we see is the three quarter notes or three quarter notes equaling one uh, two quarter notes worth or one half note or whoop, three eighth notes. In that and how the heck do you count that well the way reason through wants you to do it is they want you just to write in the word tri pull et like that 
So if you have a bar, as an example, we're going to go for a 3, 4 bar just for a second. If you have a bar with a triplet in it, like so, well, that's not a triplet, so that's just going to land on beat 1. This one here would normally land on beat 2. Reason through once you, reason through wants you to replace the number 2 with just what you're going to be playing there. They want you to replace it by putting in triple et. And yes, they're hyphening it for each one of those notes. Okay? That's what they want you to do. And then this is going to be 3. So they're going to go 1, triple et 3. That's what they want you to do. Uh, or if we're dealing with a 4-4 four, four bar, they would want, to, and you've got uh, triplet quarter notes instead. This is actually, this rhythm I'm putting on here, this is oftentimes one of the hardest rhythms to do. What they would want you to do is not even say one on that. They would want you to just simply write tri pull et spacing it out across two beats and then carrying on because that's two beats that means this one has to be the third three and four and okay so here's here's this bar first I'm going to just kind of demonstrate this so pulse is going to this speed ta ch, 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 ch. one triple let three and you notice how they're spaced out perfectly evenly they're not one triple let three that's a syncopation that I just sang even though I said the word triplet I was totally wrong they have to be even. One, triple, let three. This one's a harder one to deal with. Most oftentimes we hear somebody who is uh, not very musically savvy. They change this rhythm into a da, da, da. Or, how did I do that? That was cool. They change that rhythm into da, 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 da. You can hear that little dit that's too short. That's not a triplet. That's actually a dotted syncopated kind of rhythm or what we call a heme yola. That doesn't matter. It's not for today's lesson. We want to make sure that these guys are perfectly even. So if this is your tempo, triple let, oh, I totally didn't do it. Triple let, triple let, triple let, triple let. Okay. That's what we want to do. Go for triplets. Make sure that every single one of those is perfectly even. So this whole line would go triple let three and four and triple let three and four and so on and so forth that's that can be really tricky to play but it's got a really cool rhythm sometimes when it happens now that's what reason three wants you to do they want you to replace the number with the word normally that's not what i do i actually in in my band classes i'll oftentimes i'll go um i would actually rename this so i'm going to do this in um tinier tinier font I would actually have you still line that up with a number one and then replace uh, then we replace that uh, and instead of saying one and a uh, which is sometimes what some people want you to do I like one triplet one trip let so one triplet three and four and one triplet three and four and that's how I usually count it because then I make sure that I still line up on beat one but for breezing through, they're going to ask you to do it this way. So I'm going to ask you to do the same thing in Mad Dash Drills. Um, really, it's not the only way you can do it. In fact, I've had some people say, you know what? I don't even use the word triplet. We use the word butterfly. Butterfly, apple, apple. That works too. And that would, that would actually have been this one. Butterfly, apple, apple. Whichever works. Um, so long as you keep those triplets even and the eighth notes even with inside the beat as well. That is all there is for chapter five. So we are, I'm all done that. You guys can go do the Mad Dash drills, power through them. Uh, there's not as many of them, so you can easily get them done in a week. Uh, thank you very much for tuning into this video. If you have any more questions, join me on Discord, join me on Zoom, send me an email, whichever the case may be. I'd be happy to answer them for you. Thanks and uh, happy musicking.